Every week, 318.9 million people in America have the same routine. They get up in the morning, they get in a car, or they get on the subway, and they go to work. And they spend eight hours a day, five days a week, working. And on the weekend, they'll take a trip or they'll do something fun with their friends, and then come Monday, they do the same thing all over again, on and on, every week for the rest of their lives. In Manhattan alone, three million people go to work every day. 1.6 million of these people are commuters, and 1.4 million of these people live in Manhattan. They walk the streets with us, they ride the subways with us, and for a lot of us in this room who are attending college, they are the future us. We're spending so much time at work. But when you start looking at the statistics, You'll see a stat that says that there's 47.7% of people that report that they like their jobs. Flip that on its head, that means that 52.3% of people actually don't like going to work every day, which is where most people spend 50% of their time. And for any of you who have worked a job or have worked an internship that you didn't like, you know that you spend most of your time talking or thinking about how you don't like that job rather than actually being productive and contributing to the company, which isn't making you or your boss happy. Being a college junior right now, I'm starting to see a lot of my friends who are graduating into this workforce. And it scares me because I look at them and I say 50% of my friends are going to go into the workforce and they're not going to like waking up in the morning doing what they're doing for the rest of their lives. And for me, that's a big price to pay for just getting a paycheck. And then I look at more statistics and I start to see that as technology is, in, is advancing, it's a great thing, but it also means that technology is taking over a lot of jobs. And then you look at the world population statistics and you see that we're coming up on the largest group of individuals graduating into the workforce in the next 10 years. Right now, there are 2 billion people on Earth who are 20 or under 20 years old. All of them growing up and getting ready to go into this workforce where 50% of people say that they don't like their jobs. So what happens to us? What happens to the 2 billion under 20? Well, if you look at media outlets, a lot of people will say that we're lazy and that we're stupid and that we're entitled. So, what do these entitled people do with their lives? Do they follow the lives of people in front of them? Do they spend 50% of their time in a job that they don't like? Or are we going to go and are we going to create a new path for ourselves? I'm a big believer that the 2 billion under 20 is the generation that is going to change all statistics. We're going to go out there and we're going to find what we love to do and we're going to say that more than 50% of the population can be happy in work and life even if we don't believe that there is such thing as work-life balance. So we might have to take a little bit of a different approach. My friend Paul Henry is a great example of this. Paul grew up in Texas and he was homeschooled and <coughs> he found early, often in, early on in his life that he absolutely loved two things. He loved computer science and he loved flying. So in high school, he decided that he was going to build a lot of different programs kind of on the side of homeschooling. And he decided that he wanted to follow founders on Twitter of companies that he admired and companies that he liked. He started tweeting all of these founders and saying, you know, this is what I think about your company. This is what I love. This is what I would love to change about it. Here are some things that I built that could maybe help your company. And if, if you want them, go ahead and implement them. And then finally, when he was 17 years old, he said, I want to move to San Francisco, and I want to get a job as a software engineer. So he tweeted a founder of a company that he really loved called Winelo, Winelo and they flew him out to San Francisco. And as, at 17 years old, he interviewed and got the job. And rather than going to college, he worked at Winelo. It's been three years, and now Paul's living in the San Francisco Bay Area, working at his job, taking flying lessons. He just got his pilot's license. And he's loving it. He's loving his work and his life. 
Creating this happiness for ourselves might also mean just like teaming up with a parent that's next to us and saying, hey, we have this passion for film and we can put a camera in front of us and press play. So my friend Paige McKenzie became really good friends with her mom in high school. And the two of them said, we want to work on a project together. What should we do? And it was around the time that, that, Hank, um, that Hank Green and YouTube and Twilight and everything was going on. And they were like, let's, um, let's go and create our own YouTube channel. And so they created something called The Haunting of Sunshine Girl, which is basically this story about this girl named Sunshine and her house that's haunted. And they just started posting videos on YouTube. Today they have over 250,000 subscribers. They found a way to monetize it, and they're doing this as a full-time job. In addition to that, they're waking up every morning absolutely loving, just thinking of what creative videos can we create, putting a camera on, pressing play, engaging with fans, talking to people on Twitter, and most recently traveling around the United States with a book deal about their series on YouTube. But for a lot of people, happiness looks different in a lot of different ways. And so for my brother and I, um, it meant building our own company. When I was 18 years old, my brother and I decided that we wanted to take the programming skills that we had learned in high school to go and build something that was completely our own. So we decided to take an idea that we had for username and password storage, and we teamed up with a friend of ours, Shiv Prakash, who knew security and had just gotten his master's from USC. And the three of us spent the summer in Los Angeles building what was our first prototype. That summer, I saw a tweet from Richard Branson that said, meet me in Miami for intimate cocktails, donate $2,000 to charity. And as broke college kids, my brother and I said, man, we don't really have 2,000 bucks to borrow um, or, or to just to donate. But we went to our parents and we said, there's this amazing opportunity to meet one of the most well-known entrepreneurs, um, Richard Branson, who started Virgin Records, Virgin Atlantic, and we said, can we borrow some money to go do this? And my dad said, put together a proposal for me. Why do you need the money? Where is it going? And how are you going to pay me back? So my brother and I stayed up all night writing this proposal, sent it to my dad, and he said, you have an option. I'll loan you the money if you want to take it, but it's a loan, so you have to pay it back. And my brother and I, being the optimist that we are, said, all right, we'll take the loan. So we grabbed the $4,000, donated it, and flew to Miami. And a couple weeks later, we announced that we raised a $1.2 million seed round in our business, led by Richard Branson, Jerry Murdoch of Insight Venture Partners, and Alex Welch, who founded and sold Photo Bucket. <laughs> Two years later, the company got acquired by Reputation.com, and we moved our entire team up to the San Francisco Bay Area to work at Reputation. And when I turned 21, I decided that I wanted to move back to New York City, and I wanted to work towards getting my college degree, start my next business, and co-author a book called Two Billion Under 20, How Millennials Are Breaking Down Age Barriers and Changing the World, that highlights stories of other young people, just like us, who are changing the statistics. Each of us has a different story, and we all have a different path of how we're going to get to where we want to go in life. But I think the one thing that I've learned in talking to a lot of other young people is that while we're all different, we all have one thing in common and one thing that we can do today to get where we're going. And that one thing that's in common is that we all have a passion for something, something that there, we just do it or we look at it and we just say, this is what I love. It might be birds or it might be businesses, um, but we all have that one thing. And we all have the ability to go out and take one small step towards that every single day. When I talk to a lot of my friends and I say, you know, how, how did you get to where you are today? How have you done so many things? We all kind of equate it to the same thing. We say it's like going to the gym. If you go to the gym and you actually get on that treadmill every day for your four years in college or even after that, you get on there and you run as hard as you can run, even for 30 minutes. If you do that every day for four years while you're in college or while you're working you know, outside of a job that you might be working that you don't like, then by the time you graduate or by the time four years have passed, you're going to be the most in-shape person that you know. And I think the same thing applies to the two billion under 20. I think that we can apply that same lesson, that if we all find our passion, and we say, this is the one thing that I love to do, and we spend even 30 minutes every day doing that one thing, 
then I think that over time, over the four years, once we graduate, we're all going to be the best at that one thing, and we can go out and do anything that's related to that. So the other day, I was on the subway, and I saw a little girl next to two business professionals. She must have been coming home from school, and I just looked at her, and I had just finished kind of writing the bulk of this speech, and so I was like, wow, I wonder which side of the 50% she's going to be on when she grows up. Is she going to be the one that's happy? She wakes up, like jumps out of bed, excited to go to work? Or is she going to be the one that hits snooze, crawls back into bed and says, I don't want to go in today, goes to work and then comes home and complains about the job that she's doing? And for me, I know that the only thing that stands in her way is herself and her ability to say, this is my passion, and I'm going to take the time to do whatever it takes every day to work a little more towards that. I'm confident that she's going to figure it out. And I'm confident that her peers are going to figure it out. And I'm 100% confident that it's those people, us in this room, the 2 billion under 20, who are going to change all statistics. Thank you. <laughs>